Dude, we've been really big on health equity since day one. Like mm -hmm. the re one of the reasons why we chose uh, text over an app, not only is engagement like literally 50% higher than iOS app notifications, like mm -hmm. text messages completely womp all mm -hmm. app notifications. But beyond that, the accessibility component is something I didn't even consider until I started looking into some of the metrics around SMS in general and like modern digital communication. Cause everyone likes to think that other people have a similar setup. Mm -hmm. Like I have an iPhone. I, when I meet someone with an Android, I'm like, huh, what? But I have an iPhone. It like does not compute. Mm -hmm. And as a result, we forget that two and a half billion people, one third of the world's population rely on non-smart devices, on flip phones and track phones and pay-as-you-go phones that cannot download apps. Mm -hmm. And then there are people like my biological dad who is 70 years old and my brother bought him an iPhone and he doesn't know how to use it. Yeah. So all he's doing is sending and receiving text messages and phone calls, that's it. So even in America, 11% of the US population rely on a cellular device that can't access smartphone dependent apps. So like mm -hmm. from day one, we've been like, this is an accessibility issue where what digital health has been saying to Americans is if you don't have the newest iPhone, then you can get in line and wait with everybody else. But all the people who spent $1,300 can download this nifty app and then never use it. <laughs> it's like, yeah. So unfair. And, well, and could I add something to that? Go for it. So um, what traditional therapeutic practice has been saying to people who can't do things in person is, well, if you really want it, if you really want to get better, you'll do it. And I think both about from um, working in a, in a um, outpatient setting, and I also think about working, my own experience in working with uh, peer support groups, like 12-step groups, is that idea, it's like, well, if someone like, you know, like won't get up and shower and get out and do it, well, they just don't, they don't really want it. They don't really want to be cleaner. They don't really want to get better. And I don't know, there's this, there's this real old school idea of like, pull yourself up by your bootstraps and like, go and do it. It's like, yeah, I don't know. Like that just works for like a lot of people, but not everybody. And realistically, I want like, mental health support. I want addiction support. I want these things to be accessible to everybody in whatever way works for them. And I don't want to, I'm not critiquing uh, old school therapy, like in-person therapy or in-person uh, peer support groups, because like they've worked and they continue to work and it's a great model. But what I don't like is that like really knee jerk reaction. Well, they just don't want it bad enough because I disagree with that wholeheartedly. Dude, I'm really glad you brought that up because I spent an incredibly long time in treatment. And mm. I had people saying, like I've had friends say like, well, it wouldn't take so long if you were actually trying or applying mm. yourself. Or if you actually, we, like you said, if you actually wanted to get better. And it was excruciating for me to hear that because I was putting almost all of my available time and energy and effort into trying to get better. And I just kept hitting a wall and a friend of mine put this in a great way. She said, if you were to give somebody a button that, it, you know, the easy button, like from Staples, um, she said, if you were to give that to someone and put it, you take it and say, if you hit this button, your whole life will be better. You won't feel depressed anymore. You won't feel um, anxious or afraid or debilitated by anything. You won't hallucinate anymore. You won't self-harm anymore. And I'll just leave it right here on your dresser. And this person is in their bed and they are too depressed to get out of bed. Or like in my case, I grew up with schizophrenia. So I would hallucinate, I had a lot of auditory and visual hallucinations. So if you tell me the button is there and I'm hallucinating guards mm -hmm. in front of it. And then you tell me that it's because I don't want to get better that I'm not pressing the button. Like it's completely discounting the nature of the struggle that the person is experiencing and it feels so cruel and dismissive. So I'm glad you brought it up because it, I don't often bring it up because the reaction to us talking about this kind of thing is people saying, well, you're just making excuses for people who aren't applying themselves. And it's like, 
brother, if you've actually felt that kind of pain, you would get it, you know? Thank you.